Hi guys, it's Lacey, and today I'm gonna talk to you about growing really long princess hair. A lot of people ask me, Lacey, how did you grow really long princess hair? No, they don't ask it like that. A lot of people ask me, Lacey, how did you get your hair so long? These are the things I usually tell them, and I thought since so many people ask me, it might be good to make a video about it, so I don't have to tell people all the time. First things first, I don't use any heat on my hair, unless it's a really special occasion. I don't blow dry my hair. I don't use a straightening iron, a curling iron, I none of those things. If I want curls, I just let it dry naturally because I have curly hair. But if you don't have curly hair and you want to have curls, you can do pin curls. Those usually get curls like similar to this. A tighter, tighter curls though. But you can also use curl formers. These things are really hard to sleep in, I will tell you. So you have this like crochet hook and you put the tube on it. And then you pull your hair down through the tube. Um, it's best to do it while it's damp, leave it on until your hair dries. My hair is actually too long to use these at this point. Pin curls are pretty comfortable to sleep in. I think they're your best bet if you want heat free curls. Air dry your hair whenever you can, and if you have to blow dry it, use the cold air setting if your hair dryer has one. Hopefully it does, or low, you know, if you have to use it. Next, I'd suggest using a sulfate-free shampoo. Sulfates are really drying on your hair. They're what makes your shampoo bubble so much and suds up, but all that lathering carries away oil, which is there to protect your hair. You won't want to have clean hair, but you also want to have enough moisture. Your oil holds moisture into the hair shaft, and it also protects your hair from the sun. And without sulfates, you might want to consider a silicone-free conditioner. Some silicones can only be washed away by sulfates. Others are fine, but it's hard to tell which is which. If you're unsure, you can use an apple cider vinegar rinse twice a week to help cleanse the silicone off of your hair and make sure your hair doesn't get weighed down. I find this is also helpful with hard water deposits. To do an apple cider vinegar rinse, do two tablespoons of apple cider vinegar per cup of water. To use it, pour it over your head after shampooing and possibly after conditioning. I like to do it after conditioning, but some people like to do it before. I've also found that apple cider vinegar rinses help with tangles. If I use it after I wash my hair, my tangles tend to just fall out and I can get a brush through it much easier. You might also want to consider using a washing conditioner, which is like a two-in-one shampoo, except there's no shampoo. It's a conditioner that washes your hair. Don't get a two-in-one shampoo. Get a washing conditioner. Conditioners that wash work. Shampoos that condition don't work. That means it only takes one step which means your time in the shower takes less time, or you can have more time purely contemplating instead of actually washing your hair. Lately, I've been using this one. It's the Herbal Essence Naked Cleansing Conditioner. Um, I like it so far. Keeps my hair clean, keeps it nice and soft, and I don't have to shampoo. I only have to buy one thing. Though you have to use a ton of it, like a handful, five pumps. I use four pumps, I use four pumps. After you've washed your hair, and it's all wet and probably kind of tangled because you scrubbed on it. Unless you use apple cider vinegar because it just like falls out. But if not, you might have a harder time. So you're gonna wanna use a wide tooth comb or a tangle teaser or other hair brush designed for using on wet hair. Don't use a normal hair brush. Don't use a normal hair brush. Wet hair is super fragile because the water breaks down the hydrogen bonds in your hair molecules. So be careful with your hair, especially when it's wet. Whenever you brush, you're gonna wanna go from the ends to the top. So you're gonna start at the ends and you're gonna brush it or comb it until you don't have any tangles there. And then you move up a little bit. I also find it helps to split my hair down the middle and brush a half at a time. If you have too much hair at once, it can make it difficult to get all the way through it. So if you do smaller sections, you can get through just the one tangle there instead of going through the 60 tangles that are in this. If you're really serious about having long hair, you might wanna consider no longer dyeing or bleaching your hair. Those two things are very hard on your hair. And you can have long hair while still doing it. 
but it makes it harder. Bleaching your hair is even harder on your hair than dyeing it. When you bleach your hair, it's like opening up a book, tearing some of the pages out, and closing the book again. That's kind of like what you're doing to your hair shaft. You open it up, you take out the pigment and other parts because you can't just take out something selectively. And then you close the shaft up again. And that's why it starts getting all frizzy and tangly. It's because that shaft doesn't always close back up right, just like the book doesn't always close back up right. And that's why if you bleach your hair improperly, your hair can literally fall off. So just be careful, bleach responsibly, probably have a professional do it. That's a good idea. Don't bleach at home, unless you know what you're doing. An option for coloring your hair without using permanent or demi-permanent dyes, which can be damaging on your hair, is to use semi-permanent dye. Um, it's color deposit only, so it doesn't lift. It won't make your hair lighter, but it can change the color of your hair. Options for semi-permanent colors are Manic Panic, Splat, Punky Colors, and Special Effects. I've only used Manic Panic, but I've heard really good things about Special Effects. These mainly come in fantasy colors, so pinks, blues, purples, oranges, reds, you know, wild, crazy, fun colors. They're really fun because they do wash out, so you can dye your hair relatively often. They're non-damaging. Now you do have to watch out for the blues. Anything with a blue tint tends to stain. I dyed the tips of my hair blue one time and I had to trim it out. It didn't wash out ever. <laughs> but a pink, I used a pink for two years. It washed out really too easily almost. So these are the tips that I found the most useful while growing my hair really long. Um, before I started following these, my hair was stuck about right here. Now it's down to my waist. So that's like, yeah. Now it does take a while for hair to grow. Hair grows at about a half an inch a month. So in a year, you can grow six inches of hair. In two years, you can grow a foot of hair. That's faster than you think. What slows it down is when it gets all broken off and keeps breaking. Your hair almost always grows at about the same pace. Taking care of your hair can keep the ends from breaking off and can help you keep that length. Remember that your hair at the ends is really old. These ends can't regenerate, they can't heal themselves. They're dead, so they can't repair. They're just keratin. Well, I hope this video has been helpful for anyone who wants to grow their hair long. And I hope you all know that you're amazing, beautiful princesses and princes whether you keep your hair long or short. Thanks for watching my video and hanging out with me for a little bit. Bye.